first, very excited to be part of Cloud Field Day. Uh, very excited to have everyone here. I think this is, we always seek to get folks to come by the office when we can because we have, uh, we have real hardware and uh, we very much are a computer company, but we are building computers for the cloud era. So at Oxide, when, when we think about computing, we think about computing through the lens of cloud computing. And I don't think it's going to be controversial to, to, to say that, you know, what we believe is that the future of computing is cloud computing. Um, and cloud computing is not renting computers in someone else's data centers. We think about cloud computing in terms of the architecture, in terms of having elastic infrastructure services that are at the end of an API that make it really, really easy for software teams to build the products and services they're trying to build. And again, I, you know, if we're, if we're talking about this 10 years ago, and candidly, even when we were raising our first capital in 2019, uh, you would, uh, folks would say, well, yes, cloud computing is, fu is the future. It's going to be a very important medium. And as such, everything's going to move out to the public cloud. The whole future will shift to public cloud computing, not just cloud computing. Um, the reason we started Oxide is because we very much believe cloud computing should be ubiquitous. That architecture, the automation, the innovation, the efficiencies that you get, by way of co-designing hardware and software together and putting these infrastructure services at the end of an API, those need to be available everywhere. And everywhere means on-prem. On-prem is a very, very, very large market that has been overlooked for a very long time. Going back to you know when I was at Dell, I spent 10 years of my career at Dell and then was at a cloud computing company joint um, but when we were raising, the notion was everything's going to the public cloud. And uh, I loved that two years later at a keynote in the biggest public cloud company there is, Andy Jassy was on stage talking about 95% of IT infrastructure sitting outside the public cloud. Now, of course, Andy's using that to be able to identify market opportunity for Amazon. Uh, but even fast forward a couple of years and, uh, and, and the larger percent of IT infrastructure sits outside the public cloud and outside those walls, there is no access to the kinds of innovation and technologies that the cloud hyperscalers have been developing and building over the last couple of years. So who is Oxide? We uh, founded the company in 2019. Uh, Brian and I worked together previously at a cloud computing company, Joyent. If you haven't heard of Joyent, it was a multi-tenant, public-facing cloud computer company. Uh, building and running a cloud company is very hard. It's a very nasty business. It is, uh, you've got customers that want to show up and get a self-service experience anytime, day or night. They need absolute isolation. Uh, and that multi-tenancy problem is one that, uh, that, that, that taught us many, many, many lessons. Uh, before that, I was at Dell, Brian was at Sun Microsystems, so we kind of came up in the enterprise hardware and software world and then spent a decade in cloud. And, uh, and then you know, came to this realization that the kind of innovation that these hyperscalers had that was available to the rest of the market but only in rental form needed to be available in a form that you could own. And bringing that capability in product form to the rest of the market. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about what Oxide is building and what we are doing. We, we, we have some, some good examples to, to share with you in person today. Um, but I think the probably as important uh, about who Oxide is, is the team. Um, because we are taking on a, a pretty ambitious endeavor to go build a computer for the cloud era, um, we have been very, very fortunate to attract some of the best folks kind of across the, the, the stack over the last couple of years. And these are people that in their careers had an opportunity to go work on one layer of the stack. Maybe it was at a cloud computing company working on orchestration software. Maybe it was at a hardware company, a, a switch company, a, a, a software orchestration company. But this opportunity to come together and build a unified product, kind of a holistic approach to a, a hardware software co-design cloud computer was the draw. And uh, we, we founded the company right before COVID. It actually ended up being a bit of a blessing because we started out having to be kind of a remote first company, kind of a remote hybrid local. And in doing that, we 
kind of discovered and met folks that were not necessarily in the Bay Area, that were not necessarily in network. And, uh, you know, folks from the GE medical team that were working on CT systems, some of the best double E's that we could have hoped to have met. And folks that were, you know, far flung in different countries, different regions. And we've been able to build a team from kind of the top of the APIs all the way down to the hardware that is really the nucleus of, of the company. We also have some terrific investors. Uh, again, I think when we were raising in 2019, the, the notion of building a hardware company was a bit of a head scratcher in, in Silicon Valley. Everything was software. And, uh, and it, we, we finally found the great corner of hard tech VC. And these are investors that don't think in three to five years, they are thinking long-term. Uh, and we are uh, here today and growing and, and, and in, in large part due to their support. So we feel, feel very, very fortunate to have them uh, on board. We just crossed over uh, 75 folks. We are, uh, a, a high percentage of that is engineering, product. We obviously have uh, a fairly robust operations team. We are manufacturing these computers in Rochester, Minnesota. Anyone familiar with Rochester, Minnesota and computers? A lot of computing history in that region. Uh, IBM AS400, Cray, there were a lot of, lot of uh, amazing computer companies. But what you find is this cottage industry of all the pieces that you need if you're going to go build computers. Uh, we are really focused on deep relationships with the, with the partners that we work with. I think a big part of the de novo design that we have done from the bottom up meant identifying and selecting key partners that we could go deep with and design with. And we'll talk a little bit about what that, what that means and what that has meant when we've started to co-design things with our, our, our suppliers and our partners. Um, but when you, when you talk about you know, the energy efficiency technologies that we've designed into this system, Senyo Denki is not just a, a vendor. Um, they are a, a, a company that we have kind of worked together on an engineering basis to kind of build this, this high efficiency system. And when you approach these folks as a true partner, what's been really stunning is just the kind of help, support, and, and engagement that you get out of this, which has made a big difference. Um, our focus is on the on-prem market and really in the large enterprise and the cloud SaaS. Um, these are companies that are, have very large on-prem IT environments that are gonna be there for a long time. Um, the, the current economy, you've got 13, 15% of the economy that is online. You have this huge digital innovation wave that is pushing a lot more to cloud native application architectures. In the federal space, you know, a, a space that folks might be a little bit surprised in, in terms of what kind of innovation is happening there, but you have a sector where due to security, latency, regulatory requirements, they have to own a bunch of their data and a bunch of the applications there. And uh, we did not go out seeking the federal space, but the federal space came to us. And um, we are working closely with a number of groups inside that area. I'll talk more about some of those companies later. Uh, financial services is another early customer area of ours. Again, similar notion. They need to be able to have the automation and the developer tooling on premises for data and applications that they have to own. And in the cloud SaaS space, these are large public cloud SaaS platforms. You can think about data warehouses, e-commerce companies, and they grew up in the public cloud or they moved to the public cloud five, seven, eight years ago. And now they're kind of getting to the boundary from a business perspective, be it wanting to grow TAM and address data that sits outside the public cloud or that are trying to improve performance, reduce latency and expand beyond public cloud computing. One of the things you'll find is we are a heavily transparent company. So you can go and look at all the software that we built on GitHub. Uh, we have been talking about this journey in, uh, from the very, very beginning. So we, we have a podcast, Oxide and Friends, which is more or less a way for us to talk about things like bring up regulatory compliance, the nitty gritty of what it's taken to build both the hardware and the software stack of this company. Um, we started shipping commercially in market in Q3 of last year, we went into GA and Q4 of last year, um, and we're excited to say we now have customers in production and starting to scale up.